All right, good morning, everybody. My name is Jess. I am from the church in Peterborough, and I am super happy to be sharing with you today. We're going to look at just a specific verse in Romans chapter 4. So if you want to turn there, you can do that now. Um, I believe right now it is critical where we have our focus. Our strength is drained when we aren't able to keep focus. And if you're, if you're hearing the voice of God lately, he's really simplifying everything and getting us to maintain our focus on the simplicity of faith. Paul says, return to the sub- simplicity of devotion to Christ. And I think that's a super important thing for us right now with everything that's going on in the world is to really simply keep our focus. When Peter's walking on the water, Jesus isn't teaching him about how to walk on water. He's teaching him an exercise on how to remain focused, on how to walk in life and keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Um, And what the world needs right now, I think, is believers who actually believe and who have their eyes on Jesus and not on all of the things that are going on in society, going on in our world, even sometimes all the stuff that we have to do in our churches. But our eyes are fixed on Jesus and we're just walking in that simplicity of faith, that devotion to Christ. Uh, One of the things that God has been speaking to me personally a lot about lately is the difference between substance and activity. Uh, And what I mean by that is activity being Christian activity, church activity, the stuff that we do. um, And all of that stuff is really great, but we are meant to carry and release a substance, a substance of the person that we're following, substance of the kingdom. And sometimes our activity or our speech doesn't translate into uh, actual substance. And Hebrews 11 tells us that faith is the substance. So when we are looking to walk out our lives with God and out of all of the things that we can give ourselves to right now, so, so many things. There's distractions, yes, but there's also so many good things that we can be giving ourselves to, whether that's in our own lives, different areas we want to develop and grow in, or even in our local churches, the things that we're, we're working on, we're trying to build We don't want to neglect the absolute basics of who we are. And we are a people of faith. We are believing believers. We don't only have words to say or simply activity, but we have the substance of the kingdom that runs through our lives and is released onto other people. Jesus, he says, when I come back, will I find faith? He also says to the disciples, the work of God is to believe. So this is fundamentally, fundamentally who we are as individuals and in our local churches. We are a people of faith. We are people with high and big beliefs about who God is and what he wants to do. And that to me is is how we keep it simple. That to me is how we keep our focus. This is the one thing that I can't neglect in my walk with God is what I am believing. I don't want to specifically teach on faith because I know that we're really well-taught people, but there's a verse in Romans 4 that I want to just highlight for us. This is what's highlighted to me every time I read it and what's been on my mind lately. Um, It starts out by saying, against all hope, again, this is a very familiar verse, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and became. Substance. It goes on to say this in verse 19, of Romans 4, and this is specifically in the New King James Version, which is not normally what I read, but I really like how it says it. It says, he considered not his own body. Abraham considered not, he believed, and then he became. This statement, he considered not. Um, Our faith increases or decreases based on what we give our attention to. And what Abraham did was he didn't look at his body. He didn't consider what he felt like. He didn't consider the odds. He didn't consider um, even what he felt. He just considered what God said. And he believed and became. And that's the substance when we become. And this is through believing what God says. He considered not. That's really the key of everything that I want to say this morning. He considered not. Consider not. Faith doesn't consider all these other things. He didn't consider what God said and then said, hmm, do I have faith for this? Let me try to apply my faith. It was just simple. 
I'm not going to look at this. I'm not going to look at how I feel. I'm not going to look at my history. I'm just going to respond according to what God has said. Faith weakens and our beliefs come down when we consider all of these other things. If you think about Jesus and his disciples, when they were out on the boat, and of course it's a very familiar story to us, and there's a storm, but Jesus is sleeping. Jesus says to his disciples, you know, come on, get on the boat, we're going over. So that's, that's the word. That's what God has said, we're going over. That's the destination, that's the result, that's where we're going to end up over. So Jesus was able to sleep on the boat because he heard what he said and he knew where they were going. But the disciples, of course, as you know, woke him up because they considered what was going on. They considered the storm. They didn't simply just consider the word that Jesus spoke. Um, if you're sick in your body, the Bible says by his stripes, we were healed. So we're not all the time considering how we feel, considering the symptoms. We believe according to the word that was spoken. We consider not. It's not denial of, of certain realities that we face, but when we live a life of faith, it, there's no options. It's, it's this one option. What has God said? We are a people who believe according to what's been said, not according to what's going on, what we feel, and even sometimes what we think. The enemy loves to get us thinking that our situation and our circumstances are contrast to the word of God. He loves to trick us, but we are not those kind of people. We respond according to what has been spoken. Sometimes it's more effort to not react. Sometimes it's more effort to actually not get into the emergency responses and confessions and prayers. It takes more faith actually just to, nope, I'm staying in the diligent rest in who God is and what he has said. Jesus does an excellent job at showing us this. He always gives us the best place to look and the best place to keep our focus. Jesus, when he was sitting down with the disciples before he went to the cross, it says he reclined at the table. Um, so he's reclining because he knows the word that's been spoken. And it says John, so John is a grown man, and I don't know if this is part of the culture for grown men to lean on each other and hug each other, but it says John actually put his head on Jesus's chest. He leaned onto him. What that's saying is, I want to rest my life on that. I want to rest my life on what he is doing, on the conviction, the unshakable conviction and belief that what God has said is going to create substance in my life. I just have to keep my eyes on that. Consider not. Are people able to lay their head, if you will, or put their weight on the substance in your life? Are people able to do with you what John did with Jesus? And because there's a substance, not simply just there's talk, there's activity, there's responsibility, there's role. But fruit of the Spirit it is a substance. It's not just something. And this is what we have to offer people. That's why faith and belief is so important. I personally can't afford to look around me and to consider all these things. I consider not. Do you know that it also says in Romans 4 that Abraham considered not the body of Sarah as well. And sometimes we consider what's going on with other people, the things that they've seen in God or the things that they haven't, what's happening in their life or the things that are not. And that starts to affect what we believe for ourselves. Well, this person didn't see this. Well, this never happened for this person. That's kind of similar to saying, let's say you're someone who sits down every week and pays their bills and you have enough money to do that. You just write your checks or send your e-transfers. But when you go to do that one month, you start to consider, hmm, the person down the road just went into foreclosure. The person down the road wasn't able to pay their bills. So maybe I won't be able to pay my bills, even though you have that money in your account and you can. Abraham didn't consider other people, what they experienced the, or the lack of. He considered not and believed God. Well, when is this going to happen? Well, how is that going to happen? Well, when will God do this? Um, the stats say that this is going to happen. That has nothing to do with us. That's none of our business, all of those things. That's not what God has said. And we're not relying on our history or the history of the people around us. We're relying on God's history, and it's a perfectly good history. What has in the Bible 
and or what is God saying? That's the only question that we're, we should be asking. That's a daily question. And that's simple. In, again, everything is so complicated and, and vying for our attention. But this is the simplicity that we get to walk in. What did God say? What did God say? That's the only question. The who, what, when, why, how, where, it's none of our business. That is honestly none of our business. And Abraham became because he didn't consider those things. Isaiah 55 says that my thoughts are higher than your thoughts and so are my ways higher than your ways. Um, and I think this is an invitation for us to come up and have higher thoughts have higher thoughts and higher beliefs about who God is and what he wants to do in our lives. And as our thoughts come up, our ways, our substance will come up as well. Notice it doesn't say anything about faith in that verse. It says thoughts, because when we think right, we'll believe right, and then our ways will be right. And then our ways will be more substance versus talk versus activity versus busyness. And that's who we want to be. I know I'm not talking just for myself. I know everybody watching that is, that is your heart. And I believe this is the challenge of God to my own life. But I like to believe that for all of us as individuals and in local churches, that God is, is looking for us to just return to that simplicity. What has he said? Okay, I'm just going to look at that. I can't look at all these other things. And as we do that, we actually become. We actually have fruit on our life that other people can eat from. People are able to lean on us just like John did with Jesus. Consider not. Just before I kind of wrap up here, I just want to encourage anybody and everybody who's watching and I want to remind you in your spirit that God has a plan for your life that he is not inactive in your life and these last two years in COVID they have not held you back you haven't missed anything God is for you and he's adding things to your life especially in this last season that you might not even be aware of all things are possible with God and our future is completely and totally secure. Let's fix our eyes on Jesus. Let's consider only what he said and not look at all these other things. All right. I hope that that is an encouragement to you and have a great week, everyone.